So here is the coloured pencil demonstration. You can see I've already started um, the layers and building the tone. I am using the red to create that lighter tone first, covering most of the area. I just want to establish light layers of colour and then build them up rather than going straight in with a red because we know the Coca-Cola can is red, but we don't want to just go in and make it all red because we want those tonal differences so that we can have that three-dimensional quality of the crush can. So you can see here that I'm working back in with darker reds, also going to work back in with a dark grey pencil in a moment. And that dark grey is better to use than a black. Black is very strong and it can be quite difficult to go over with a coloured pencil again. Um, so we're trying to create those layers and blend um, those colours together seamlessly to give that three-dimensional unrealistic effect. So the darker colours, I would stay clear of the black and go for more of um, those darker greys. See here that I'm using a range of pencils or colours, I should say. Um, so, you know, yellows and oranges as well because the red is just not red. It's got a number of colours mixed into it to give those different qualities. So continuing to build those layers, determining where my tonal differences are. So going from dark to light. And also um, the direction that I'm taking my colored pencil in isn't exactly just straight lines either. Sometimes I come in and you can see that I'm using a circular motion as well to blend the uh, marks made by the pencil. So here we have the lead pencil demonstration. Everyone should be very confident with their use of lead pencil and how to use the range of lead pencils. So your HBs, Bs, 2Bs, 4Bs and 6Bs. Obviously as the number rises, uh, the lead pencil is getting darker. That's as basic as it gets. Here I'm just using a HB and a 2B. I'm starting to map out those tonal qualities. Now I'm not particularly paying attention to where there's light or dark. I'm just paying attention to where there are tonal qualities and just starting to map that out. I'm not using a 4B or a 6B pencil yet, and I'm going to avoid using a 6B and a 4B pencil right until the very end. I would suggest that you do the same thing if you do choose to use a lead pencil as your main medium to just use the HB and the 2B to do the majority of your can and then come back in once you're done with the 4B and the 6B. It's very difficult to bring in those lighter qualities after they have been, um, after you've added all those darker qualities. Um, it's a lot easier to have all that lighter tone and then start to build up those darker uh, qualities once that is done. So you can see here that I'm not just going in one kind of motion. I'm also going circular motions, very similar to the colored pencil, making sure that the marks that I'm making are blending together seamlessly. You can also see that I'm using the white quality of the paper to my advantage. So in the right um, hand corner of my square, where that glint from the light on my can is, I am leaving that space deliberately white and light to give that really shiny metal quality to it. So just taking your time, making sure that those nice tonal qualities are added with the range of pencil, 2B, HB, and then 4B and 6B later for the darker areas. 
So we, here we have a watercolour demonstration using the watercolour discs. Uh, the watercolour discs are quite difficult um, as opposed to the other mediums that you can choose for, for your assessment. The beauty of watercolour is that you can do layers just like coloured pencil and you can do them relatively quickly. So by having less pigment on your brush and more water, you can create those light qualities to your work. And then obviously as you're adding more pigment, your watercolour will become darker as you are all aware from the printmaking task. Um, the hindrance of watercolour, I would say, is that it is better to wait for the layers to dry before adding more um, because then your work becomes a little bit muddied um, if you're not waiting for those layers to dry. And you'll see here that in my demonstration, I am not able to wait for the layers to dry. And you can see that it starts blending and mixing together. Not exactly how I would like to, particularly when I want to add some finer details. Just like the coloured pencil, I'm not using black to darken my colours or make the red darker. I'm actually using a brown to do that and trying to blend it and mix it so that we don't see a complete difference between the brown and the red. Obviously, the realism is a little bit more difficult to create with the watercolour straight away. Again, layers is best to use, um, which obviously would impact on the drying time and things like that. It does have its own unique qualities, which is great. And you can take areas away if you need to. So you can see there that my daub of brown was not what I was wanting or needing. So I could get rid of it very quickly by just using a cotton tip or a bit of tissue. not quite as realistic as coloured pencil or lead pencil, but you can still see those nice tonal qualities. Trying to come back in with those finer details, but finding it very difficult because the layers aren't dry. So here we have a soft pastel demonstration Soft pastels we are using are rather large and kind of chunky. Um, you'll see here that I do work relatively quickly, not just because I am um, have set up the video, um, but just pushing the soft pastel around with a cotton bud or cotton tip, I should say, and just coming back in and building and building and building quite like a coloured pencil. Obviously, we don't have a range of colours with our soft pastels, so all we have is red. So you do have to just use the one red. But building those layers, making sure that we've got those tonal qualities. See there that I just applied all of that lighter area with white and then went over it with the red. And I'm now blending it in with my cotton tip, just creating that lighter kind of pinky colour. And I'm using a brown soft pastel, not a black, a brown to go over those darker areas and try and build that tonal qualities a little bit more. I can then blend into that section to the left of that, so where I added the white if I need to, to kind of soften that line up a little bit more, but I can do that later. This technique is very effective, or this medium, I should say, is very effective, and you can work relatively quickly. Obviously, it is messy. It would be best to use the cotton tip or your finger, but then remembering which finger you've used so you don't mix up your colours. So you see here that I'm um, adding white. There is a lighter area near the black. You can't quite see that on the picture um, from the photo and I'm just blending straight into that white. And 
and then going to blend it a little bit more. Okay, so here's the charcoal demonstration. In this demonstration, I only had access to the willow charcoal and no access to the compressed charcoal, which you would have had experience using. Um, to substitute that, I've just used a dark soft pastel or, or black soft pastel, I should say, um, which works pretty much the same way. So what we're doing here is we're actually using it the same way that we use the soft pastel However, I'm finding that just using the willow charcoal is probably the best bet for this um, technique because the willow charcoal allows you to build those layers nicely without getting too messy with the compressed charcoal because obviously that gets everywhere. So we're just using a cotton tip as well. And you can see that because I keep using it, I am able to blend that charcoal a little bit easier and then just use it as kind of a pencil already because it is primed with charcoal. But I can just use it rather than coming back in with the willow. So those gray areas, particularly on the text, because the text isn't white, um, I can just use the tip of the cotton tip. So I'm limiting the amount of compressed charcoal I would be using. Um, the same way that you would do that with a lead pencil, you would leave that until the end if you want some darker areas because it is quite difficult to come back in and make those lighter qualities with charcoal, particularly when you're dealing with that compressed charcoal. I am using a rubber here to come back in with those um, really lighter qualities, which you can do. I would limit the amount of times you use the rubber because it will get to a point where you can't get rid of the charcoal um, and you're just destroying an eraser. But it's good to use to um, kind of even up the lines or make them crisp. 